Online registration for all spring and summer orientation sessions at Itawamba Community College are now open and dates are filling up fast. ICC's free orientation is mandatory for all incoming freshmen. Students must have submitted an application for admission and a copy of their ACT score before registering. Don't forget to sign up for financial aid, scholarships, and housing before it's too late. To register or for more information, visit iccms.edu slash orientation or call 662-862-8251. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. Hello, my name is Taylor Tudor and I'm a recruiter for Etiwamba Community College. We're so disappointed that we're not able to host you on our campus, but we still want to answer all of your questions about college admissions, financial aid, scholarships, and even orientation. You can schedule a virtual appointment with us at tours.iccms.edu, select virtual meeting time, and then select the time that works best for you. Put in a good email address and we will send you a Zoom meeting link. From there, you can access Zoom from the Zoom app, Zoom app on your phone, or you can sit down at a desktop computer. I look forward to meeting you online soon. Welcome everybody to another edition of Live with the Tribe. Uh, today I am talking with a guy who is a high school legend, ICC legend, and now a Georgia State legend and Dan Ellington. Dan, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, good, man. Hey, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's just jump right in a little bit. Uh, before ICC, you stood out on the field up there at Center Hill in high school. Uh, Talk a bit – I just want you to briefly touch on not just your high school career, but even leading up to your high school career at Center Hill. Talk about your time there and how you progressed as a player and how you fell in love with the game of football. Uh, starting with the game of football, I started playing football around the age of five. So – and I've been, like, around football all my life. My whole family played football. I used to get checked out at elementary school, like, every Friday to go watch my cousins and my uncle play. Uh, my dad played football, college football. My uncle played college football. My cousin played college football and NFL football. So football has been a part of my family for like well, a really long time. It's going to be forever be a part of my family. Uh, we're, a football, we're a football family. We love football. That's all we know. Um, so I started playing football around the age of five, playing quarterback around the age of five. And um, in just going and just – and moving to Olive Branch and playing for Center Hill High School was was a was a, probably one of the biggest stages of my life um, because Center Hill didn't take me just as a student or an athlete; they took me part as of of their family. Um, you know, there's some special people at Center Hill, and and uh, I couldn't be where I'm at without them. Okay, well now let's go back to your senior year. You're you're through playing high school football. You're being recruited and everything. Yeah. Um, which which one of our coaches was it? Coach Coleman or Coach Cannon? Who who heavily yeah. recruited you the most? Uh, Coach Coach Coleman. Coach Coleman. Okay. All right. Well, of course, Nick no longer at our at ICC. He went on to uh, I believe it was Murray State, and now he's at Northeast. Yeah. But uh, just talk about the recruiting process a little bit and what made ICC stand out as the place you wanted to continue your football and academic career. Well, at first it was Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> Because Coach uh, Coach Trevathan, he recruited me probably the, the toughest. Um, it was Northeast for like for pretty much most of my high school career, most of my senior year, and um, I started getting like the bigger, the bigger like ICC and East Mississippi and Mississippi Gulf Coast. They all started coming in, so I was like, all right, I probably need to go take these visits. So I went to go take the visits. ICC was the first visit. Uh, no, actually, the second visit I went on and ever since I went on an ICC visit I was like oh okay <laughs> I like this place and um it just felt like home it wasn't it wasn't too far from home but it wasn't you know too close to home either uh it was perfect distance it was it, I loved I loved everything there um and uh, every time I went on like on another another visit I always compared the, the school I went to to ICC instead of Northeast so in my mind, I was like, all right, if you're comparing these schools to this school and if they're not topping ICC, then you need to go to ICC. And I took my last visit to Gulf Coast. I really liked the Gulf Coast. It was just too far from home. And I think that's what that that's what put the icing on the cake right there. So uh, ICC was the, be the best choice for me. 
Okay. Well, certainly we are all, uh, looking back now, we're, we're all excited that you came here still. <laughs> and, uh, but let, you know, coming in your freshman year, you know, you recruited, you go in the, in the summer camp there. Uh, in G, I think it was June when y'all came in, not in July. Yeah. It was June. Well, you get here, you start working out and then all of a sudden we have a Washington state transfer to the same position. And yeah. Peyton Bender. Yeah. Uh, Talk a bit about yours and Peyton's relationship there in that camp and knowing you were competing for the same job, but also knowing that, hey, we're both going to get playing time probably. Yeah. And you both did and you both shined. But talk about what it was like to have that relationship with him and to be able to learn with a guy who had already been at the Division One level. Division One, Yeah, it was – man, Peyton relationship was really good, actually. People probably thought we had uh, – we didn't like each other because we competed for the spot. But – no, it, it was actually – it was pretty good. Uh, obviously, on the field, we was competing. But off the field, we hung out. We played video games together. We went to eat together. So, we, we was really good friends off the field. And, actually, that was probably one of the best things Coach Coleman probably done, uh, bringing him in. Because if you want to be the best, you got to compete against the best. So, bringing Peyton in was probably really good for me because he was Division One, and I wanted to compete against Division One guys. So, I had if I wanted it to be a division one quarterback, I had to elevate my game and you know see how I comp- how I was compared to Peyton. So, um, and when him coming in, I saw that I, I was I was really good um, competing with him. So I had no doubt in my mind that I could play division one ball after after that camp because I felt like me and his game were it wasn't similar, but I thought my game was 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 pretty good to play division one football when I, when I uh, compared both my game to each other okay all right well let's go fast forward now first game number four ranked <laughs> gulf coast coming into fulton all right i'm gonna i'm gonna try if i can get this to work i'm gonna share on my screen real quick okay uh a play that kind of busted you onto the scene in the junior college level let me see if i can get this to work all right this is that this is the play that kind of busted you on the scene you busted play ball rolling on the ground and yeah <laughs> just Made something happen, and then of course he took it to the house there to give us the yeah. touchdown. Take us through that play. I think it was fourth down. I think it was fourth to third down. We had to go for it because it wasn't. It, we couldn't kick a field goal and we couldn't punt it, so it was in that no no man's land. And um, <laughs> I remember like it was yesterday. Uh, Bruce, we well, we call him Dodo, but his his, his name is last name is Bruce. Dodo actually said that Dodo wanted to, that screenplay. It was a screen called Solid. And uh, he kept telling Coach Coleman to run it. Run solid, run solid, run solid. And early in the game, Dodo actually got like a 40-yard gain off that play. Um, so it was like fourth and like six, fourth quarter. I think this was to put the game away, actually. And uh, like fourth and about six and – I look at I look at Dodo and he's telling Coach Coleman called solid, and Coach Coleman look at um, Coach Woodle who was the offensive line coach at the time, <laughs> and Coach Woodle nod his head, and Coach Coleman signaling in to play solid, solid right, no solid Y. It was actually solid Y, and um, so I was I was telling the offensive line to play. Look at the clock. I let it run down a little bit and call the snap and. I just see the ball rolling. I was like, oh, this is not good. So I pick it up, and I look at Dodo, and I was like, all right, I probably still got time to get it off. So I look sidearm it, and I got it off right before I got hit by the defensive lineman. I think it was Isaiah Bugs. Um, and I got it off, and when Dodo scored, I was like, nobody that just happened. And uh, I just remember the crowd going crazy. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a heck of a play by, by everybody, and uh, it was a big win for us. Okay, well, we're going to stay in that game because uh, I'm also going to show you this that I'm sure you remember real well. It's your first touchdown here at ICC. My first ever touchdown in my college career. That's right. First ever collegiate touchdown. What did that mean to you? Because that was early in the game. It was, it was early. It was our first drive of the game. It was my first drive of my college career, my first start of my college career. It was, that meant a lot for me. Um, you know, playing college ball, you don't get that opportunity. Not too many people get that opportunity. Uh, when I got in the end zone, it was just like, God, um, I was just, I was, I couldn't, I was just excited at that moment. I guess the number four team in the nation uh, at home, 
big time game. Um, it was just a special. It was a, that was a special moment for me. There's no doubt it wasn't. That was a that was a uh, that was a special game for you, your teammates as well, mm-hmm. because nobody really gave. Gave us you see a chance in that game. Like you, you mentioned Isaiah Bugs, like he went to Alabama yeah. from Gulf Coast. Like they had good players. We had good players too, but you know, they four in the nation is preseason rankings, but that's you know yeah. they got a good team. Mm-hmm. So for them to come to our place and to us open that season with that win and everything, talk about what it meant to not only get that that big win, but to play your first college game at home. Mm-hmm. With that ICC fan base, that as you said, can be they can be loud. Yeah, they make themselves known. Talk about that a little bit. It was uh, it was special. Um, it was because I remember Coach Coleman saying that um, Thursday nights in Fortin is uh, be pretty packed, and and that and I remember doing pregame. It was just pregame. Quarterbacks was coming out to warm up and throw, and we were like the first group to come out and throw, and um, to warm up actually. And uh, you just see people just come in the game, I, and I was just like, "Oh my God!" It's just, it's just so many people. It was the biggest crowd I played in because I wasn't used to that bigger crowd in high school. Uh, obviously, we had big crowds in high school, but not that much. Uh, and uh, we get out, we come out for to run out to to run out to um, to the field, and, and I just look on our side, and I was like, "Oh my God!" I mean, you just see a lot of people. You see the students. President was at the game. You saw the band. Oh, it was just – it was crazy. It was so many people. Uh, and after that game, it was just – every that day, because we had class that Friday, because we used to have class on Fridays. Uh, after that game, the next day on Friday, at um, my teacher saw me, because I didn't used to talk in class. My teacher saw me, and they actually, like, hey, Dan. I was like, hi. Yeah, it was crazy after that. I think everybody knew who I was after that game, and, it was it was pretty special. There's no doubt that it's special. And I will say one last thing about that Gulf Coast game. At the end of the night, a guy who – he's no longer a sports writer, but he was a sports writer for the newspaper here in Fulton for a while. And I remember right at the end of the game, he tweeted, Dan Ellington is good at football. So, <laughs> uh, so that, that was like – because, you know, being center heel, it's not, even, it's not that far away from Fulton. But a lot yeah. of times people just focus on the high schools locally and not really looking yeah. throughout – what is a great state of high school football. But I don't know if you ever saw that tweet or remember that, but what does that mean to you when you know that just one game in, you made an impact and show you were able to showcase your skills and help your team win right off the bat? Uh, it meant that right there, it was, it was like, it was crazy because that probably wasn't my best football. I still had a lot of football ahead of me. So when he said that, I was just like, I was, it was kind of, it was special, but like, People hasn't seen the best yet. The best was yet to come. So it was it was kind of if you was playing against us, you was like we're, we're kind of scared of them. And I mean, it was I mean that was just kind of just it was special. It was a special night. My name's Jordan Smith, and I'm one of our recruiters here at Little Wamba Community College. Although we can't meet with you right now or host you on our campus, we're still available to answer any questions you may have from an admissions, financial aid, scholarships, and orientation perspective. Anything you could possibly need, we're here to help you. You can set up a virtual appointment with us at tours.iccms.edu and select the time that best fits your schedule. All you have to do is download the Zoom app to your phone or log in from a computer. When the time comes, we'll send you a Zoom meeting link to take care of everything you might need. I look forward to meeting you online soon. What's better than waiting in line at the bank? Literally everything. Renaissance Bank's mobile check deposit lets you take care of checks wherever you want. Click the plus sign, then deposit in the Renaissance mobile app. Read the instructions and review terms and conditions. Next, write your name and for mobile deposit only at Renaissance Bank on the back, then sign the check. Remember, all payees named on the front of your check must sign the back of it. Photograph it, front and back, so we know it's real. Choose the account to deposit into, type in the amount, click continue, and go on your way. You'll receive an email that your deposit is being processed. Mark the check as having been deposited, then store it in a secure place for up to five days in case there's any reason it's needed. Once the check clears, destroy it in a secure manner. 
So what are you waiting for? Download the Renaissance mobile banking app and make waiting in line a thing of the past. Check, phone, check. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. Online registration for all spring and summer orientation sessions at Itawamba Community College are now open and dates are filling up fast. ICC's free orientation is mandatory for all incoming freshmen. Students must have submitted an application for admission and a copy of their ACT score before registering. Don't forget to sign up for financial aid, scholarships, and housing before it's too late. To register or for more information, visit iccms.edu slash orientation or call 662-862-8251. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. Upset Gulf Coast first game of the season, your freshman year. Mm-hmm. Sophomore year, first two games, I had a little tough luck. But then Northwest comes to town. They're mm-hmm. ranked. And Thursday nights in Fulton are definitely special. And this is the game winner where you threw it to Jamel Thomas. Just talk about that play a little bit. That actually was a call quarterback run. It was actually a quarterback – it was a quarterback power play. Um, and it's where the guard pulls, the running back leads for me. We had just ran that play previous, and we wanted to run it again because it was like fourth and like two. But Coach Cook gave me an option. He always gave me, like, options. He gave me the keys to the offense to to check some stuff. So I I seen Jamel one-on-one both times, and it was like fourth and two. uh, And I seen Jamel one-on-one. So I gave him a signal for a fade ball, and he, he gave me the look back. He was like, yeah. I said, all right, we're going to do it. So if we don't get this, <laughs> I'm going to get yelled at for not running the ball. <laughs> so but if we do get it, we're going to be – we're probably going to win the game. So um, – and, and Jamel is a good one-on-one receiver. He can, go, he can get the ball, especially the jump balls. So I trusted him. I trusted him. And um, I said HUD, and I just gave him a ball. And I think it was actually P.I. on the play uh, on Northwest. And I just gave him a jump ball, and he just caught it. And I was like, no way he just caught that ball. And it was P.I. And um, I I went to the sideline. Coach uh, Cook said, did you give him that route? I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, my God. And then he patted me on the head, and, and he said, good job. And that was just crazy. Well, you mentioned there Coach Cook, as uh, for anybody who doesn't know, you had Coach Nick Coleman your freshman year and then yeah. Coach Cook your sophomore year. Talk about what it was like to be able to learn from both of those guys and how, you know, take us through that transition of being able to pretty much learn two new playbooks, yeah. essentially. Uh, they're, they're two different they're, – they're both good coaches, Coach Coleman and Coach Cook, but they got two different styles. I think Coach, Coach Coleman is more of an air raid guy. He likes to spin it. Like to get the ball out fast. Um, uh, coach Cook more is a more of an RPO type of coach. Uh, he will he can throw. The, we will throw the ball a lot down the field with him some. Uh, but he, it's more RPO game. Uh, which which was both both coaches. I like both of their styles. I like I I felt like I I fit into those both of those styles well. I thought both of those styles was great for my game. So I was fine with both of those type of style play. But I thought playing for Coach Cook's style was was probably better for me. And then if I had to rank them, it would be Coach Cook's style, then it would be Coach Coleman's style if I had to pick what kind of playbook I want to play in. And I thought Coach Cook's style was more of my type because I can check a receiver to a route. And then we can – me and Coach Cook can go back and talk about it and then we'll be on the same page and stuff, so, and vice versa. Um, so I thought Coach Cook was offense was more of type of my game, uh, and, it, and and it showed. Uh, and with that season, a lot of a lot of players did a lot of special things that year with Coach Cook, and uh, it was it was a really really good special season. Well, you mentioned uh, we talked about Jamal. You talked about him being a good uh, good receiver. Yeah. You you were fortunate to play with some very good receivers here oh, at ICC. Yeah. Of course, uh, I'm going to leave some out, but you know, you had Dorian Gaston, Isaiah yeah. Howard, um, Jamel, and then uh, Honeycutt, Malik Honeycutt, uh, Christian Salisbury, or Slash, as people call him. But yeah. there's one that's 
not necessarily more special, but his name got called up more. That's Terry Williams. You oh, and yeah. him both named All American your sophomore years. But talk about Terry, you talk about your relationship with all your wide receivers and Terry too. Uh, well, Terry, well, Christian was my roommate my freshman year, so we kind of bonded. But my freshman year, my my freshman spring, my roommate was Terry. And that was that was going into our sophomore year, so we, me and Terry, we threw a lot, like a lot. I think it was like twice, twice a day. Sometimes it was we threw every day. I know that for a fact. So when it came into like the game, it was it was just like easy. It was like back out ball for us because he knew what I wanted and I knew what he wanted, and. I knew how he wanted the ball on a on a route. I knew where he – and he knew where I was going to throw it on a route. So, we we knew each other like the back of our hands. Like, it was – like, if it was third and five, he knew exactly where I want him to go and where he, he knew where I was going to throw it. It was it was just like, all right, look, let's go. Give me the ball. I was like, all right, I got you. Because he – we like – we just knew each other like like the back of our hands. Like, it was just – it was crazy. Um Terry, Terry was, is a, a special. He was a special player. He still is a special player. Uh, Christian, he was another like slash is what we call him. Uh, another speedy guy. Uh, you can get the ball to him quick. He can make something happen. Honey cut. Uh, he's he's our deep threat. Him and him and um, him and Jamel. Uh, they was they was both really good at the at the deep balls and. Uh, and um, you know, both are doing good right now. Both playing Division One football, and um, I wish both of them the best this upcoming season. Um, and Doran and Doran and uh, Isaiah, uh, those two there were my freshman year. Um, Doran was the guy that I threw jump balls to to get um, to get touchdowns. And then when he left, Jamel came, so I, I, re- I kind of replaced DG. Don't tell DG that. And uh, Isaiah was kind of a possession receiver. I just got him the ball, uh, just put it in his area, and he's going to catch it. So uh, I, I played with some really, really talented receivers. Uh, everybody went Division One. Um, I mean, I was fortunate enough to play with all those guys. Well, let's talk about your sophomore year a little bit there. Um, those last five games were pretty pretty special. Uh, yeah. Finished in a tie for North Division, unfortunately, due to tiebreaker, missed out on the playoffs. Uh, yeah. But you you guys, I don't know if you're aware of the numbers. You you guys outscored in those last five games. You outscored opponent opponents 259 to 108, which is I and y'all scored up scored over 63 times during that stretch, uh, mm-hmm. including the final game against Holmes. I don't remember the score, but it was it was very lopsided. And it gets northeast. Don't forget about that one. Oh no, we're gonna go back northeast. Don't <laughs> <laughs> but uh, talk about just that group. Um, that y'all had your sophomore year, the the how close you guys were and that bond you had, and just how y'all were able to play outside of your mind those last five games. We was we got hot, uh, and I knew it was gonna come. I knew it. I knew it was gonna get hot, and no team wasn't gonna stop our offense. I just didn't know what time it. I didn't know what time of the season we were gonna get hot at. Um, I wish it would have been at the beginning of the season when we played Gulf Coast. Um, God, I wish I could, I wish I could have that one back to this day. But we just got those, and for those who don't know that that Gulf Coast was a season opener at Gulf Coast and lost in was it overtime or yeah no yeah, it was, it was final play final play it would if we had kicked it and went to overtime but we went for two oh, right yeah and um, that was just to let anybody listening who didn't know but uh, go ahead and continue about that sophomore group yeah I, we just we got hot uh, I think it was after the uh, the East Mississippi well actually it was the East Mississippi game that when we got hot I think we. Through, we threw for like over 500. We had over like 600 yard total offense uh, against East Mississippi that night. And after that East Mississippi game, that's when we start winning. All our win streak came in. Defense stamp, defense started playing lights out. I don't know what Coach Cannon did to him, but uh, the defense started playing lights out. The offense was, we just got hot as a team. And when, once we got hot, I knew it was going to be, I knew it was going to be hard to stop us, um, especially our offense because we had some weapons. <laughs> so we just got hot at the right time. Hello, my 
My name is Taylor Tudor and I'm a recruiter for Etiwamba Community College. We're so disappointed that we're not able to host you on our campus, but we still want to answer all of your questions about college admissions, financial aid, scholarships, and even orientation. You can schedule a virtual appointment with us at tours.iccms.edu, select virtual meeting time, and then select the time that works best for you. Put in a good email address and we will send you a Zoom meeting link. From there, you can access Zoom from the Zoom app, Zoom app on your phone or you can sit down at a desktop computer. I look forward to meeting you online soon. You live life on your own terms. You won't be told what you can't do. And we're here to back you. From the boardroom to the big stage, Renaissance Bank supports women striving for success. Because greatness isn't held to anyone's expectations, except yours. So if anyone says you can't, Prove them wrong. Rise with Renaissance. Supporting women and the communities they influence every day. When I was looking for a college back in the day, you know, I, I'm from Amory, Mississippi, just 30 minutes down the road, and I'm a homebody, and, and I had to commute, and I said, I need to go to a college that's not too far from home. And I heard of ICC. And once I stepped on campus, I knew this is the junior college I need to be at. I didn't think of another college. I said, this is it. When I stepped on campus, the atmosphere, it just was drawn to me. And I felt like this is where I belong. I belong here at Itawamba Community College. Because at that moment, I knew this is the best junior college on the planet. This is where I need to be. This is where I was planted. And that's why I am what I am today, because of Itawamba Community College. Online registration for all spring and summer orientation sessions at Itawamba Community College are now open and dates are filling up fast. ICC's free orientation is mandatory for all incoming freshmen. Students must have submitted an application for admission and a copy of their ACT score before registering. Don't forget to sign up for financial aid, scholarships, and housing before it's too late. To register or for more information, visit iccms.edu slash orientation or call 662-862-8251. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. I know you've been a quarterback offensive mind to talk a little about that defensive group that we had oh, that year. Uh defensive group where it was pretty good. I think I think we had five sign division one on defense, maybe. I think that's right. I think it's five. Um but anyway, they were they were really good. I think we had a really good secondary, really good defensive line. Um they played hard, they always flew to the ball. Uh, they're going to create turnovers. Um, you know, Coach Cannon's going to always have the defense on point. So that was never a question for me. I always knew that that was going to be that was going to be good. If they didn't, they was going to get a chewing. So uh, I was <laughs> I was never worried about our defense. I was pretty much worried about our offense most of the time because uh, I knew the defense going to keep us in the game. Um, if we was having a bad night, they was going to keep us in the game. And, and they was having a bad night. It was vice versa. We was going to keep them in the game. So, uh, we, we, was, we, was, we, was, we was fine. I knew the defense was going to be fine each and every week. Okay, let's uh, mention some of your big boys up front that kept you safe. Uh, yeah. I mean, you had Galmore, Preston mm -hmm. Hay. Like, just talk about those – what the people, quote, unquote, call the big uglies. Talk right. about those guys and uh, mention how they were able to keep you safe but also help that running game. When we had uh, when we had Deshaun Dinkins and uh, Octavius back there, they was uh, they was really good. Uh, coached by Coach Smiles so sophomore year, uh, I think they had like three coaches come in. Uh, had Coach Woodle at the start, and then after Coach Woodle, they had a, uh, I forgot this coach name. Anyway, they I, he he wasn't even there that long, and then Coach Smiles comes in in the summer, so they they they've been introduced to three different type coaches. And um, and they and they just they they bought into what Coach Smiles wanted it. They worked hard every single day, even in that heat when we had to run. I don't think nobody knows what that Mississippi heat's like, uh, especially in fall camp. Um, they worked especially, all, especially when uh, located right off the waterway. Where yeah, it's always humid. <laughs> so every single day, I don't think nobody. They worked their butts off every day, uh, and my hat goes off to them. I think I used to tell them every every time I was proud of them. I thanked them. 
um, every time. When I broke the 3,000-yard mark, I know I thanked every single one of them for sure because without them, I, I wouldn't do what I did. And, uh, and it, starts with, it starts up front, and they did a really good job each and every game. And uh, one guy who doesn't get mentioned in that a lot is Chris uh, Long as well, the tight end. It was, yeah. He was blocking, catching, doing everything Man. too. Yeah. Chris was actually my roommate my sophomore year. Uh, I think, mean, Chris was probably the closest of one I was on the team with, actually. Um, he's like a brother to me. Um, I love his mom. I love his little brother. Uh, I wish me and Chris would have went to the same Division One school together, actually. Chris, my – Chris, my – I love Chris. God, I love Chris. That's my boy. That's my boy. All right. Now, you mentioned Northeast earlier. I told you we'd come back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Freshman year, went up there. A lot of people – I'm not going to say who, but a lot of people who I know who work in – at the at the other school, they uh they were like, man, y'all gonna y'all gonna give us troubles tonight. And then we went up there, came out a little flat, didn't get the result we wanted. Northeast beat us. Yep. Fast forward sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Unless I'm mistaken, Northeast came in ranked, I believe. Yeah, they were ranked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you guys, I'll even say it, y'all got some redemption from the year before <laughs> in that game. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see, I think the score. Yeah, y'all beat them. 68 to 28. I, I think that's a statement. Oh, so, yeah. talk about the game your sophomore year, being able to get your redemption, and talk and go through what that rivalry means to be a part of, to play in it, and what it means to each school that you're aware of. Um, well, that week in practice, they, they, they put like a video out, them doing a chop after they beat us our fresh, my freshman year. It was after the game they did it towards our band. So Coach Cannon wasn't happy about that. So and everybody that was on that team that our freshman year, they knew what it felt like. And I think the freshmen my sophomore year saw it in our eyes what that game meant because they hadn't played in that rivalry before. And they they haven't been in that atmosphere. That was the practice. That was that game was the most people I ever seen that in fourth. That game was so packed. My dad said he had to even go to Northeast side because he couldn't find nowhere to sit at, on ICC side. And he said when he went to the Northeast side, he barely found somewhere to sit over there. So it was that was that many people there. It's so that game so fun to play in. It's so it's always sold out probably. Um, but going back to the game that week. Um, I just remember Coach Cannon just being mad the whole week. Like, it was a purpose. Everything was a purpose. And uh, so we get to the – we get the pregame. And first group goes out, is which, which is kickers, quarterbacks, centers, punt returners, and kick returners. So we get out. We, we're stretching. Quarterbacks and centers are stretching. And um, Northeast decides to come on our sideline where, where, where we're scratching that literally right in front of us, and they decide to come on our sideline and run down to their part of the field where they scratch. Coach Cannon didn't take that too well either. So that made Coach Cannon even more mad. I think we went inside like 10 minutes earlier than what we supposed to have been did because he, he couldn't – he had to let his frustration out. And we get in there, Coach Cannon just started going off, talking about how disrespectful it was, and everybody else was already mad anyway about it. And – um. And he, he comes up to us. He said, we're taking the ball, and we better score. And I was like, okay, okay, I got you. So, and he was just, he was furious. I think about five more, he left. Five more, five more minutes later, he came back in yelling some more about the game. So, it was, I knew Coach Cannon, that one meant a lot to Coach Cannon. Um, and it meant a lot to me. It was my birthday game. Uh, it, was, it was a special night. And we go out, we go out there. I think we complete the first four passes, end up scoring that drive. Uh, we go for – I think we go for it on fourth down, I think, on like the one, and we end up scoring. Um, like that, And then I, from then on, it just it, – we just took off. And it was nothing they can do to stop us. It was – when I left, when I walked out of the locker room before the game started, I knew we was going to win the game. It was – there was no way it was going to beat us. All right, well um... – one thing that has that had became a, has become a tradition over the years is when you win at home, you run to the band, you do the no. job. 
<laughs> talk about not just that night when you got your redemption against Northeast, but every time you guys were able to get the win here in Fulton, mm-hmm. what was that feeling like of going over there, celebrating with the band, climbing in the stands, doing the mm-hmm. chop? Like, what, what, ex- explain that feeling to the people who haven't got to experience that. It's a stress reliever for one. <laughs> Cause you just you just put in all that hard work that week that week, and you just go out on that Thursday or Saturday, and once that clock goes off and you see you got more points than the other team, God, now it's time to go celebrate with the band, the best band in the state, um, and the dancers. Can't forget about the dancers. Uh, and and God, it's so it's so fun. You just see everybody the smiles on everybody's faces, all the hard work everybody put in. The coaches, the players, the band, chillies, the dancers, everybody's happy. And that's all that's 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 just when you can do that, it's just it means a lot. It's just it's special. Okay, well unfortunately, ICC's only a two year school, so we had to say bye to you after your sophomore year, but you went over yeah. went over to Atlanta, went to Georgia State and made your mark over there. Uh, mm-hmm. of course, uh everybody who didn't know didn't know who you were, you introduced them real quick this year at Tennessee. Going yeah. up there and beating the volunteers with your teammates. Uh, I just just go through that game and what it's like to be able to go on the road to a place that's got hundred thousand people. What it's like to walk on the field and then leave with the win with your team. And uh, just talk about talk about that and your time at Georgia State. Um, it was fun. The Tennessee game was really really fun. Um, you know, I've been to Ole Miss. I've been to Mississippi State. I've been to Alabama. I've been to, I've been to SEC traditions. So, um, going to Tennessee, getting escorted to to the the stadium, and you just see a bunch of horns, all this horns, <laughs> all of it, so ugly. And you just and the more people I saw, the more like I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna go, I'm about to go off. And I just thought I got a video actually in my phone. And um, one of my teammates took me. I'm just listening to music. I'm getting pumped on the bus. And, um, oh, my God. So we get off the bus. We go in the locker room. All our fans there. Um, and I'm, I'm just – I'm pumped. I'm ready. And uh, now I, I, we get dressed. And I go out for pregame. And their fans start coming in. And, God, that stadium is huge. It's oh – God, it's so big. Uh, and I look up, I was like, no way. It's like, it's really, it's, 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 I'm really about to play in this game. So we come out for captains. It's me, Remy, Hunter, that just got signed to play for the Falcons, and Ed. We the four captains. And we, we, we got to come out where there's student sections that, which probably not the best, come out. Come out and you just you just hear it. They just start talking. They just start talking. And then after they got done talking, that freaking song they love to play, Sora comes on, they everybody sings it. And you gotta walk with the ref and we're walking. And I remember Hunter saying, It's about to go down. I was like, You're right. So uh I mean and, and they just started singing that ugly song. And finally they got done with it. We walk out. Keep in mind, I've never seen, like, I've never been, like, in the SEC atmosphere playing in it before. So I get out there, and I'm just like, oh, God. And uh, we get the ball. No, they get the ball first because Coach Elliott, the, the first in the second half. And uh, we won a toss. Uh, we defer. The defense get a big, big turnover. And um, we score first. And after that, I was like, oh, it's, oh we're, we're going to, we're, we're about to do it. We're, we're probably going to win the game. And um, we go out, we, we, we just fast forward to halftime. We're down 17, 14. In my mind, we – I didn't want us to play just to be in the game, if that makes sense. I wanted us to win it. Because the year before we played NC State, we were just happy about being in the game at halftime. At halftime at NC State, I think it was 20 to 7. And we were just content to just be in the game. So I think Coach, not Coach, I shouldn't say Coach Cannon, Coach Elliott preached about that, and we got the ball. We got the ball coming out of halftime. I remember my offensive coordinator, Coach Glenn, saying, hey, this is going to be the biggest drive of the game. We have to score. 
like have to, not three, seven. And we go score. He dials up the perfect 75-yard touchdown drive. I mean, every play he called, we was getting a six, five, seven. I mean, every play he called. I mean, we, he just dialing them up. And uh, Arby Payne scores the – catches the uh, touchdown pass, and we're up 21-17. Uh, and then fast forward to the fourth quarter, defense get a stop. Uh, and uh, we're, we're winning 28 to 23, and I make that run. And, and when I make that run, defense get another interception. And I was like, we're, we're about to win it. We're about to do it. And we made the probably the hugest upset in school history. And it was, it was so fun. It was, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Online registration for all spring and summer orientation sessions at Itawamba Community College are now open and dates are filling up fast. ICC's free orientation is mandatory for all incoming freshmen. Students must have submitted an application for admission and a copy of their ACT score before registering. Don't forget to sign up for financial aid, scholarships, and housing before it's too late. To register or for more information, visit iccms.edu slash orientation or call 662-862-8251. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. That's home. <laughs> that's just like the Ravens. That's just like Pahokee, Florida. Um, that's my second home. I got my degree from there, my first degree, college degree. It's part of my heart. It's part of my soul. It's part of my spirit. And, you know, it's everything. You're the one with community college, baby. Uh, it's, it's everything. It shaped me up to being a great man because it was part of the journey of me becoming the young man I am today. And um, it's home, man. That, that's. That's it, like, I can go there and lay my head down without no problems. It'll woman community college, the best star here. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. Hello, my name is Jordan Smith and I'm one of our recruiters here at the Nwamba Community College. Although we can't meet with you right now or host you on our campus, we're still available to answer any questions you may have from admissions, financial aid, scholarships, and orientation perspective. Anything you could possibly need, we're here to help you. You can set up a virtual appointment with us at tours.iccms.edu and select the time that best fits your schedule. All you have to do is download the Zoom app to your phone or log in from a computer. When the time comes, we'll send you a Zoom meeting link to take care of everything you might need. I look forward to meeting you online soon. We missed the Tennessee game, but we can't talk about your time over there at Georgia State without mentioning how tough you are finishing the season, torn AC. Was it just your ACL? Uh, yeah, and a little bit of my I meniscus, mean, not much. Just okay. A little bit. Either way, how many how many games did you play with your ACL torn? Four. Four, including the bowl game. No. Yeah, four, including the bowl game. Okay. Talk a little bit about what it was like and to be able to play with that pain and be able to have your teammates help you, but. More so, knowing that you're gonna you're going out still on your terms, you're not gonna let the injury end your football career four four games early. Um, it was it was it was crazy. I remember uh, against ULM when I did it, I thought I was done. I thought I was done. So I get so after the it was I went because it was about to go in halftime. So I go get see the doctor and all that. Shower, pull my clothes. We're still playing a game. So, I know I'm talking about the backup quarterback, Quad Brown, but the defense is on the field at, at one point. And I, and I actually go to one of our trainers, and I said, have you ever treated somebody that played on a torn ACM? And, uh, and I was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, interesting. I didn't ask him no more questions after that. So, I get, we, we, I start back focusing on the game. I get on the plane, going back to Atlanta, I get on the plane, and I start thinking, I'm going to try and play on this thing. And uh, I think that Monday we confirmed that it was torn, everything everything was torn, the MCL, not the MCL, but the ACL was torn. 
the MCL is kind of slick, slightly torn. And uh, we get all that confirmed. I go to practice and just watch. But I think it was like Monday night after I had just got out of class, I called Coach, I called Coach Glenn first. I called Coach Glenn first. And I asked him would he let me play on it. And he said, have you talked to Coach Elliott? And I was like, no. He was like, I'm fine with it as long as Coach Elliott is fine with it. So I was like, all right. So I called Coach Elliott. As soon as I got off the phone with Coach Glenn, I called Coach Elliott. I said, will you let me play on this? And he was like, huh? I was like, will you let me play on it? And he was like, it's up. He's like, if you want to and if your dad say you can, your parents say you can, I will let you play. And I was like, huh? Okay. Bet. So I called my dad. I was like, hey, can I play on this? And he was like, what? I was like, can I play on it? And he was like, uh, no, you're going to be a sitting duck. I was like, dad, come on, please. And so he was like, and then um, he was like, call him back in like 30 minutes. He was at work. So it was a bad time to call him. So I called uh, Coach Elliott, and, he was, and we talked about it a little bit more. He said, we're going to see how you move on at practice. Him and my dad talked. My dad gave me the okay to play. And, and when my dad gave me the okay to play, I was like, yeah, I'm playing. Forget it. And Coach Elliott gave me the okay to play like on Friday before we play app because he wasn't going to let me play unless he saw me moving well. And then so play against app. We lose that game. Play against South. Al, we win that one. Then play against Southern. We lose that one. But playing that bowl game and get it, win it, it was just – one, it was special just playing a bowl game because I never played in a postseason game before. So that was, that was special. And uh, just playing for just the school and my coaches and my teammates, that was – that meant a lot to me because I didn't want to go out with a with, with that that type of injury and just let them down. I wanted to try to get the school their first Sun Belt Championship. That was my goal, and it just – I failed at it. But – uh you know, just going out and just leaving it all on line for the coaches and the team and the school, that's, that, that was the main reason why I really played on that thing. Well, I'll tell you, and I'm sure, you, sure you're already aware, and I'm sure you had plenty of people reach out to you when all that happened and from ICC, but we were all proud of you. We were all rooting for you the whole time you were over there, of course, and we still are, and everything you do, we're rooting for you mm-hmm. um, and all your former teammates. So we, you know how it is. We're a family here. So yeah. uh, talk a little bit about that ICC family what ICC has meant to you, what it meant to you when you were here, and what it still means to you now. Uh, I still talk to my ICC family. Dr. Prohaska, she, uh, she always makes sure I'm doing my work. She, uh, she keeps me she, – she kept me on track um, for my first year when I was here at Georgia State. And she was actually the first person I met on my visit to ICC um, in, the, in the, like, school – in the education department-wise. Um, Bobby Gerald still check on me every now and then. I think he's still the best math teacher at ICC. I um, uh, talked to Coach Porter when I actually when my high school played um, there a couple months back in, in the state playoffs. Uh, we we talked a little bit. She actually taught me in class, and obviously me and Coach Cannon, Coach Cook, Coach Coach Ray, um, Coach Fox. We all we still we still keep in contact. Uh, Coach Cannon takes me probably every other week. Um, it's just, it's just a family. Uh, it's just special. Um, you, everybody gonna know you. You're gonna know them. Um, it's just, it's a special place. Okay, well, what's, what's next for Dan Ellington? What, uh, what, what's your future plans right now? Yeah. And, uh, just take us through kind of what you're thinking the future. Uh, right now, I think I'm a coach. That's what I've been wanting to do that for a long, long time. Uh, ever since. I knew I've been wanting to coach here since high school, my freshman year. So I think that's the next that's the next step for me. Well, uh, during our media day two years ago, your but you've been in your junior year at uh, <laughs> Georgia State. Coach Cook actually said, you know, going into this new year, it was going to be a little different with quarterback because the year before his quarterback was in there studying film more than he was. So you being a coach probably ain't a surprise to anybody who knows you, but uh, we definitely wish you good luck. But before I, before I let you go on the interview, just uh, take it, just, just go through what you would tell somebody if they're considering to come to ICC to either play or just to be a student. Either way is if you come to play or you come to be a student, you're going to have a great time at ICC. Uh, it's a special place. Um, 
it's everything is about that place. It's it's, it's nice. Um, I mean, the people are there. You're gonna enjoy everybody there, from the staff workers to your coaches, the AD, the president. You can't. President Allen's probably one of the best presidents um, in in the state of Mississippi and JUCO. I mean, he from the time he got there, I don't know. He knew my name, and that was before the season even started. And that was that that was special to me because. He he takes the time out to, to talk to the students, so that that means a lot. So you're gonna go, you're gonna be a student of a, a, a really good president. You're gonna go. The teacher's gonna help you uh, the best way they can, uh, and you're gonna get a great education at ICC. I mean, you're gonna leave. You're gonna leave ICC going to your uh, university. Um, you know, very very prepared because ICC is gonna prepare you very very well. Well, Dan, thanks again for joining us this week on uh, for this week's edition of Live with the Tribe. We greatly appreciate everything you did for us on the field here at ICC and in the classroom and what you're going to continue to do in the future. You're always welcome back in Fulton anytime. And once again, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you. Roll Tribe. Beat Northeast, baby. That's home. <laughs> that's just like the Ravens. That's just like Pahokee, Florida. Um, that's my second home. I got my degree from there, my first degree, college degree. It's part of my heart, it's part of my soul, it's part of my spirit. And, you know, it's everything. You're the one with Community College, baby. Uh, it's, it's everything. It shaped me up to being a great man because it was part of the journey of me becoming the young man I am today. And um, it's home, man. That, that's, that's it. Like, I can go there and lay my head down without no problems. It a woman Community College, the best start here. Hello, my name is Jordan Smith and I'm one of our recruiters here at Littlewamba Community College. Although we can't meet with you right now or host you on our campus, we're still available to answer any questions you may have from admissions, financial aid, scholarships, and orientation perspective. Anything you could possibly need, we're here to help you. You can set up a virtual appointment with us at tours.iccms.edu and select the time that best fits your schedule. All you have to do is download the Zoom app phone or log in from a computer. When the time comes, we'll send you a Zoom meeting link to take care of everything you might need. I look forward to meeting you online soon. Online registration for all spring and summer orientation sessions at Itawamba Community College are now open and dates are filling up fast. ICC's free orientation is mandatory for all incoming freshmen. Students must have submitted an application for admission and a copy of their ACT score before registering. Don't forget to sign up for financial aid, scholarships, and housing before it's too late. To register or for more information, visit iccms.edu slash orientation or call 662-862-8251. Itawamba Community College, the best start here.